The sun is shining in Norfolk. It's put a smile on my face and I've got up early to come to a top secret spot where one of Britain's most endangered amphibians lives. Well, it lives now because it's been successfully reintroduced and I've come to meet a pretty special bloke too, John Baker, who's overseen the process. He's around here somewhere. This is one of the ponds that we know there are pool frogs on. Looking for pool frogs is more like looking for reptiles than it is like looking for other amphibians. So we're essentially looking for animals basking in warm sunny spots. This is the site where the very last northern pool frogs lived in the wild before they became nationally extinct in the 90s. Now it's one of two sites where pool frogs have been reintroduced. That wasn't as straightforward as it seems, because no. there's pool frogs all over Europe. The question is, which pool frogs were the right pool frogs? It's really important that we reintroduce northern pool frogs rather than southern pool frogs back into England. Hold on. I'm going to interrupt you, because they've started calling. What about that? Listen. That's a male? Look at that. What a handsome animal. And there's no mistaking it for common frog. That lime yeah. green stripe down the back is very prominent. Absolutely, yeah. Male northern pool frogs call during May and June to attract females to breed. They sound like they're a bit further out. Yeah, the males tend to call from warm areas out in the middle of the pond rather than at the edge. Oh, I can see the vocal sacs. Like a couple of little bubble gum blows. Yeah. In and out, in and out. That's fantastic. What's the plan then? The males go out and start vocalising in the sunshine. Where are the females? The females tend to keep away from the male chorus areas until they're ready to mate. And at that point, they'll move towards the calling males. And they don't lay massive clumps of spawn like common frog, do they? No, no. The spawn, it looks similar, but it's much smaller. So each female pool frog lays about half a dozen small clumps of spawn, and they're about the size of a walnut. Since they were reintroduced in 2005, the population of northern pool frogs has been steadily increasing. But they still only exist in two pockets in Norfolk. I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but you've still got all of your frogs in two baskets, so surely the plan is for further reintroductions. Yeah, absolutely. The challenge is, though, is, is they're quite fussy about their habitat, but they clearly love it at this site. But there's not many other sites in the country that are like this. Yeah, a lot of hard work. And today we're enjoying the fruits of all of that effort, because listen to that. That is a beautiful thing. Hats off to everyone involved, seriously lovely sunny morning in a secret spot in Norfolk and we've enjoyed what can only be described as a great conservation success and we've been serenaded by the pool frogs. I love that. Delightful little amphibians, very pretty frogs I have to say. I love the vocal sounds. I know. <laughs> they are so really, cool. Really, really entertaining. And you know, I first heard about that site way back in 1973 from my biology teacher John Buckley. It took me a long time to get there, but it was worthwhile. And credit where credit's due when it comes to conservation. A lot of people work really hard on that project, so I'd just like to thank them. Amphibian Reptile and Conservation Trust, Norfolk Wildlife Trust, Anglia Mortar, Forestry England, Natural England, the Green Recovery Challenge Fund, and I'd like to add personally, all of the volunteers who no doubt worked hard, long hours in often pouring rain or baking hot conditions to make that happen. So that you all Thank you. So many things rely on volunteers, don't mm -hmm. they? So, yeah, big thank you to you.